so hi everybody i am yes before you guess i am recording this at a hospital um i've been sick for pretty much a week so i'm checking myself out for anything serious um i've been here for more than like three hours um waiting on somebody uh so it is 9 48 right now and i usually record at six that's how much of a time difference that we're at right now so this is a emergency kind of backup video um i usually make my videos a day beforehand and this is the day beforehand and i have no time so so i'm gonna make time during the hospital because i doubt anyone's gonna come through this door while i record i hope so anyways uh <laughs> Today we're gonna be reading whatever the thing said because this is like I did it like that, but don't worry, um, y'all. We'll soon find out as we get into reading. Um, don't worry, I am gonna be okay. Let's hope the results are gonna be okay with the flu. Um, my doctors think I most likely have the flu or anything, nothing too serious, but we'll see. Anyways, uh, let's get straight into it. All right, y'all. So <laughs> I'm this in front of my mom because we're in the hospital. Okay, okay. Um, uh, chapter. 29 trying to return home by the way we're reading yana ray's last shoes if y'all didn't get it all right i'm letting y'all know okay hey wait you stumbled behind him not able to free yourself from freddie's grip as you struggled i didn't get to see goodbye to the others properly i don't care he coldly replied dragging you out of the house and starting the way back i don't care what your issue is uh, excuse me i don't care <laughs> i don't get what your issue is you sighed as, and gave up struggling seeing as it wasn't doing anything it's like you were jealous of the attention they were giving me or something that's the answer <laughs> jealous oh don't even start with that shit we're going home now the sasha commanded fiercely still holding your arm as you, while you two while the two of your you began your journey back so shut the fuck up about them so pleasant he muttered under your breath huffing fine his un i was about to say unger <laughs> his anger subsided slightly when he saw you weren't trying to resist anymore so he loosened his grip and gave you a small bit of freedom you don't want you don't want me to talk to about the others then let's talk about something else you decided rem remembering that you wanted to ask about your mother's nightmares Freddy smirked a little, his smug attitude returning as he read your thoughts. You wanna, you want, you wanna ask me about your mother's nightmares and whether or not I'm the one behind them? He faked a yawn, devilishly smiling while you, when you glared. Well, are you or aren't you? You stopped walking and crossed your arms icily. Cut with the bullshit. And I swear I'll find a way to get my hands on more talent. I'm okay. I said I keep you alive. I like to play around with people and slash them into shreds. That's just what I do. So don't take it too personally, doll. <laughs> the dream demon <clears throat> drawed out. All right, y'all. Sorry, interruptions. The doctor came in. <laughs> now I can't go to school tomorrow. <laughs> okay. Um, anyway. Um, excuse me. I need to go back. The, de the dream demon drawled out, his green eyes glittering with amusement at your annoyance. You gritted your teeth, growing infuriated by his casual response. If you ever, ever lay a finger on my mom again, I will make you sorry. Very sorry. You shouted at him angrily, glaring at him for a few seconds more before storming off in the, di in the direction of your home. Dumb, dumb face, come back. He called after you, not feeling any regret whatsoever as his aggravating chuckle, chuckling filled your ears. Hurting your mom like that? What a complete jerk. And he thought it was a huge joke, too. He found it funny. Perhaps you should get some more hypo so. Then he'd see how freaking funny it was. Do that and I'll do what? Hurt her more? You snapped at him when he caught up to you and grasped your wrist, tears pricking the corner of your eyes while you try to keep it together. Probably wouldn't. Probably take that hypo so as soon as I see it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Is your mother that fucking important to you? He questioned, still grinning from your previous outburst. Mm, I couldn't give a fuck less about my mother. She's nothing but a bitch. She is important to me. She's my mother, for God's sakes. Just because you have issues with your mother doesn't mean I do. Mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just like be like, mm-hmm. <laughs> Remember the past chapters? You retorted sharply, using your right hand to slap the male's face from frustration. Ooh, is this the telenovela? <laughs> Freddy stared at you for a second or two, then released a dark chuckle, his amusement agreeing, increasing. Did you just slap me? 
He grabbed her other wrist too, yanking you closer to him. It takes a lot of guts to slap me like that, sweets. You think, <laughs> what, you think I'm scared? You shot back fierce, furiously. I'll do it again if you don't stop attacking my mom. Your threat merely made him let out another laugh. Him not taking it seriously at all. You think I'm going to stop because of a slap or two? Because you want me to? I'd stop. <laughs> I'd say stop dreaming, princess. But you're not even asleep. The killer taunted, treating your threat like a grain of salt as he mumbled against your lips. Oh, get fucked. You fist feistly swore, hating that... Hating that him being so close to you caused your cheeks to glow a soft pink. You're a complete dick, and now I'm regretting a green tear. Give fuck? Do you, if you want me to give fuck, we can do it as soon as we get back to your bedroom so we can share. Oh my god. Oh goodness. He twisted your words against you, flashing you one of his, one of his smirks and feeling satisfied when he let, felt your frustration rise. You know, I'm beginning to hate you. You spoke bluntly. Why would... Why should I continue this deal if you're just going to hurt the people around me? That doesn't even make any sense. <clears throat> Before Freddy could give you one of his sarcastic responses, a familiar white masked male shoved into the side and stood in front of you, glaring at the dream demon as he acted defensive. What the fuck are you doing here, stalker? <laughs> Freddy growled. You need to... <laughs> oh my goodness. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> you need to... F you need to Why am I saying it... We Okay, you need to fuck right off, or do you want me to whoop your ass again? Um, mm. Miguel pointed at you, shook his head, and then clutched his kitchen knife, making the killer opposite t to him chuckle. Mm. I, I can't, I'm not maliciously. Bitch, I'll do what I want. Why would I not go for her family? I never fucking said I wouldn't. Freddy read his thoughts and raised his knife glove, aggravated that you were so close to Miguel. I forgot to... Uh, see, I knew why. <clears throat> Miguel tightened his hold on his knife as he took a step forwards, intending to teach Freddy a lesson and wanting to start a fight. No, wait. You gripped the back of, you gripped the back of, his, of the masked male's boiler suit in alarm, not wanting the two to begin another fight. Both of you stop. Miguel turned around to face you slowly, tilting his head slightly as he didn't understand why you were panicking. You're such a fucking loser, Myers. <laughs> Freddy jeered. Do, why do you even want me to stop? It's not like, like, <laughs> it's not like it affects your bitch ass. A few seconds passed and then the burnt male laughed again, finding Miguel's silent replies to be incredibly funny. Aw, you want you want to stop for her? You want me to stop for her? And here I was thinking that Norman was the sappy one. Such a little sweetheart, aren't you? He pushed Freddy's, excuse me. He pushed Mika's buttons on purpose, intending to irrit, intending on irritating irritating the stalker. I can't take this anymore. You let go of Mika's boiler suit before deciding to leave. You don't touch my mom again. You demanded, talking to Freddy, and you, you trailed off, not knowing what to do about Mikael. He hadn't done anything. You, you just do what you normally do. <laughs> Once you finished speaking, you shirt off and carried on walking home. A little surprised that neither flasher, neither of the slashers followed you. Maybe they'd actually taken what you said seriously? That was unexpected. Making your way home felt like it was taking forever. But eventually you arrived back at your house, knowing it was quite late, whipping out your phone to check what time it, it was. You saw a couple of messages from your mom, obviously worried about you. It's nothing like it's not like she was being overdramatic, considering you'd been silent and away from home for a while. So you opened the front door and entered your house. Why in your back? Relief dripped from your from your mother's tone as she appeared in the hallway. Happy that you've come back home. Welcome home, honey. Where have you been? Oh, um. Uh, you froze, wondering what to say, wondering how to answer. It's not like you could say, oh, I was just in the house where four serial killers live, and tell her that you might return. I was visiting Candace and Laura in the hospital. They were really hurt pretty badly. You lied. You lied, making you feel bad. You should actually visit them. Well, they, hmm, I don't know about that. 
they're in the hospital? How come? What happened? Are they okay? She questioned frantically, fear washing over her face. Yeah, they are. You dumped your back near the door, stifling st and stifled a yawn. A little tired. Crap, you had to deal with Freddy tonight, too. They got attacked, but they'll be okay, Mom. Don't worry about it. You accepted her a hug, pulling back a minute later and going up the stairs, your mother following. Attacked? She picked up a cert She picked out a certain word, sounding incredible, extremely worried. Was it close? Did it... Did it take did it pl take place somewhere in town? She her alarm was natural, but you didn't feel like dealing with it. After today, you were tired as hell. <clears throat> it didn't, and it wasn't close. Like I said before, it's nothing to worry about. I think I'm gonna go to sleep now, Mom. You gave her another hug, then softly shut your door, getting out of your clothes and swapping into your pajamas, thinking about today. From being stalked by Mikael during class, facing Norman and his mother, interrupting in a chaotic chat involving three out of the five slashers, arguing with Freddy on the way back, and of course, of course you were exhausted. Man, you try this back, maybe I'll skip class tomorrow. Visit Laura and Candace in the hospital, then check on Norman. Yeah. You mumbled, wilt you sprawled on top of your bed, your eyes fluttering on their own. Time to deal with Freddy again so hey everyone i just realized i didn't have my glasses on my face um and the reason is i don't have my glasses with me so half of these will be mispronounced kind of badly i don't know but this is the first time i've read without glasses in forever and this will be only the last time so yeah <laughs> um anyways uh chapter 30 taking care of mom Dealing with Freddy the entire night was incredibly irritating. The dream demon insulting the other slashers, acting intimate with you, while he tried his best to change your mind about visiting Norman and the others a second time. For the last time, Freddy, I'm not going to change my mind. I do what I want, you told him fiercely, yanking your wrist out of his grasp and standing your ground. Stop socializing with those f fucking freaks and I'll leave your mother alone, he smoothly retorted. How does that sound, sugar? <laughs> he, he, what he offered simply made you laugh, folding your arms and flicking your head to the side, knowing not to trust him. So you narrowed your eyes and didn't, didn't accept his offer. No. W no way. One, I don't trust you because I don't trust you. And two, I have a plan to make sure she stays safe anyway. You festfully declared, oh, you little bitch. <laughs> The dream demon's <laughs> arrogant attitude faltered a little, reading your thoughts and seeing your smart strategy. <laughs> this isn't over, he threatened. Oh, how adorable. You cooed sweetly. I didn't know your little tantrums could be so cute. <laughs> Freddy gritted his teeth and shot and you shot him one an <laughs> you shot him an angel angelic little smile, happy that you were the angry ag arrogant one for once. Oh goodness. <laughs> <clears throat> why do you even want to hang out with those pieces of shit anyway he snapped they're just other killers with fuck the past i think that answers your own question man the male gripped your shoulders and shook you like he was trying to shove some sense into your head don't act like you're better than them you shot sharply it's not like you have a perfect past either just like the previous times you try to push him back back your wrist got held the killer was not happy. Hmm. You will not go back there, Fred Freddy growled, his burnt face extremely close to yours while he ordered you to stay away from the others. After all, you were the one who agreed to be his girl. You were the one who agreed to be who agreed on to his deal, and you were the one that he obsessed over day and night. You, on the other hand, were just starting to understand how much a dream demon was obsessed with you. It was like like you were his possession or something. Hmm, you're finally beginning to understand. Freddy mumbled against your lips. I don't belong to anyone. You retaliated stubbornly, your cheeks glowing pink as you try your best not to get distracted. And why why don't you find some other girl to fuck around with? Because you agreed to be mine. He psychotically purred. You can't just back out anytime you want to. You're not going anywhere. His gaze had a wicked glint. Whilst he, no he noticed your faint blush, growing amused instead of annoyed now. You were about to argue with his reply, but the dream demon silenced you before he you could. His chaplets pressed against yours as he continued to hold your wrist. The faint blush became much, much brighter. Your body stifled. 
stiffled, <laughs> stiffened, and your eyes widened slightly, not expecting Freddy to make such a bold move. Actually, you probably should have expected it, seeing as part of his personality was perverted and he always acted aroused. You wanted to pull away and carry on standing your ground, but your body was betraying you, allowing this to continue. Your thoughts were all over the place because this is just, just, why do you always want to do, why do you always do this to me? You whispered, breaking the kiss a little bit, but still being close to his lips. Do what? <laughs> Freddie innocently responded, his lips curling into a sadistic smirk. You purposely, you, purp <laughs> you purposely mess with my mind and make me feel so, so... You couldn't come up with a proper answer. Your head clouded with confusion and a random craving. So what, princess? His tone was mischievous. Could it be you actually enjoyed that? Hmm, because if so, we could always do it again if you so desired all. You shook your head and took a step back, managing your, to free your wrist as your senses returns. It returned. I'll pass, thank you. I need to wake up now. You grasp at any straws to clear your mind properly instead of thinking of about your plans for tomorrow. Skip skip uni, visit your friends in hospital, get hypocil for mother, and check in with Norman and the rest. Freddy snorted out what you had planned, disliking your plan with a strong passion. I think the fuck not. I didn't say you could fucking go. Well, that's okay, because I said I could go. <laughs> you casually cut him off. We are so we're done with this. Now wake me up and wake me up now. <clears throat> Freddie, finally releasing that there, finally realizing that there was no way he could convince you to change your mind, glared at you before clicking his left, left hand, left, his left hand's finger. Or why does that sound so weird? And waking you up, lightly yawning, you stretched and rolled out of bed, glancing at the time while while you didn't feel stressed about it. You were skipping out on class today anyway. It's not like time mattered. You got dressed re relatively fast and went downstairs. Your mom holding a cup of coffee between both hands. Did she Did she not sleep? Was she f that frightened? Crap, you need to get your hands on that hypocell and you need to g and get <laughs> and get your hands on it fast. And it was only when you sat down she, that she noticed you, forcing a fake smile. Oh, my, good morning. How'd you sleep? Her voice and expression were both brimming with exhaustion. The bags under her eyes, now a deeper shade of purple shit. I slept fine, Mom, but that's not important right now. You brushed off the conversation she was trying to start and crossed your arms. You're not sleeping, are you? You're, you softened your tone and spoke to her in a gentle manner, putting your psychology skills to the test. No... Your mother mumbled under her breath, avoiding your gaze and taking another sip of her coffee. I'm, I'm not. So, what is it in your dreams that scare you so, to this degree? You questioned calmly. Oh, it's nothing, dear. She, she sought another weak smile at you, trying to avoid the subject. So you tried another tactic. You get placed in a boiler room, face off against a burnt man with a metal gloved hand on his right hand, don't you? You hoped your assumption was correct. Her eyes widened. So hi everyone, I am back at my house where it's more nice and quiet. Um, no, won't be as much interruptions as earlier. Uh, yeah, I got back at ten. Um, yeah, so um, and I can't go to school tomorrow. So luckily, I'm able to finish this video. Am I right? <laughs> Anyways, uh, continuing on. How, how did you and you hear these little girls sing a creepy m nursery rhyme you kept on talking seeing her face turn pale and knowing you were right one two freddy's coming for you three four better lock your door her voice shook with fear tears prickling at the edges of her eyes you reached out and held her hands waiting to be com comforting five six grab your crucifix you both were on the edge by this point your mother obviously being more unsettled than you were seven eight better stay up late your mother's hands were troubling so you gave them a light squeeze before finishing the nursery rhyme nine ten never sleep again the two of you finished together tears streaming down her face so she couldn't hold them back any longer how, how did you know why she was trembling her grip on the cup like iron while her exhaustion overtaken by terror how Remember when you thought I was self-harming? You read right off the cr previous remarks from your mother, which caused her body to stiffen from shock. 
This isn't about nightmares and not feeling well anymore, Wyan. I want to know why you're hurting yourself. By the way, this is a flashback. <laughs> Wait, what? And then they, they're like, I don't believe you. Skipping all that. I, I, I. Your mother swallowed before continuing. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry I didn't believe you. Your, her, your, her apology was well taken. And you appreciating that she was now believing you. Don't worry about it. You sent her a smile and stood up. Now let's get going. Going? Where are we going? She frowned a bit, bewildered by what you just said. We're going to get the, we're going to, we're going to go to the hospital to get hypo cell. You answered, heading towards the hallway and the front, and to the front door. But honey, I, I can't get hypo cell. The, the, the doctors won't prescribe me any without a slip. Your mother pointed out anxiously, following you out of the kitchen. I'll get, I'll get it. I'll get it with the slip Hannibal gave me. Then, and then you can use it. You told her your plan and opened the door, stepping outside as you inhaled that sweet, fresh air. All right, Mom? I don't know, sweetheart. She was hesitant. Don't don't you need it, Ham? H how could you respond without telling the truth? I've I've stopped having those nasty nightmares. You fibbled in a fake, cheerful voice, smiling again. So we can use this little trick until your stops, too, okay? You lied work, and she nodded, accepting it. Oh, well, yep, time to head to the hospital, get your hands on some more high puzzles, see Candace and Laura, escort your mother back home, and then visit Hannibal in the other house. house. All right, that sounds like a solid plan to me. <clears throat> Chapter 31, Hypocell and Hannibal. <laughs> I don't know about this. Your mother trailed off uneas uneasily, both of you walking through the hospital's entrance and heading towards the front desk. It was a good idea, but in all but mom, everything will be a-okay. You cut her off and held her, her hand, giving it a squeeze to calm her down a bit. Let's just ask and see if this works. If this doesn't, that's fine, but we'll never know if we don't try it, now will we? You're right, dear. She flashed a weak smile, still looking picky and exhausted. I guess the lack of sleep is making me feel more anxious than usual. After giving her a hand, another squeeze, you approach the front desk, deciding to talk to instead of your mom. Hi there, how can I help you today? The receptionist behind the desk greeted pleasantly. Do you need an appointment and, and see someone without a problem? About a problem? Or are you here to re for a refill on, the particular on a particular type of pill? Um, I'm here for a refill on pills. You chose the second option and shifted and shifted your foot, growing a little nervous. Okie dokie, what pills? She nicely asked, her face friendly and not and not acting fake at all. I'm currently on pills called Hypocil. You answered truthfully, trying to smile and act normal, but uh, that always seemed to fail. Ah, the dream suppressant pills. The receptionist smiled back at you and pulled out a large notepad, flipping through the pages. It seems that more and more people are starting to need Hypocil. I wonder why. She moves quietly, not knowing... And if she was talking directly to you or her, to herself. Name? She inquired a few seconds later, looking up from the notepad, not knowing who you were on the list of people's names. Oh, my name is Ah oh, Wyan. How nice to see you again. <laughs> a, polite ca a polite voice came from the side. The three of you turned to see Hannibal standing there and holding a few folders in his hands. Nice to see you as well, Miss Ellen. It's nice to see you too. You shyly responded, your heart fluttering from for some sort from some strange reason as you interacted with him. Perhaps you're still intent you were still in intimidated from the showdown at Crystal Lake? No, because you just talked you just talked just fine when you were at his house, so what was going on? <laughs> Ah, Dr. Lecter. The receptionist spoke respectfully. I hope that you're having a good day so far and not feeling too stressed out. My day could be better. She could be going better. But much appreciated, though. Uh, Isabella, I pray that you're having a good day as well. Um, Hannibal walked towards the front desk and stood relatively close to you, flashing her a smile. My day is doing fine. Thank you for asking. The receptionist just dipped her head and smiled back. I was just about to describe this girl some hypocell, but I need to know her full name so I can give it to her. It's Wyan Ellen. Hannibal answered for you in a calm tone. And it was me who prescribed it, I believe. Ah, yes, I found your name. She spoke to you and passed you over a small bottle of hypocell pills. Enough to last a month. Like last time. Thank you. You sighed in relief. Your mother breathing out a second later. I hate to trouble you, Wyan, dear. The dark-haired male started speaking to you, and so you swiveled your attention back to him. But would you mind if I could take a few minutes of your time in my office? Mm-hmm. 
You were confused, but after seeing the serious look in his eyes, you decided to comply and pass the apples to your mother. Sure, you awkwardly answered, feeling unnerved while you followed him, leaving your leaving behind your mother and the receptionist. Once you entered his office, Hannibal sat down in, his, in the chair behind the desk, you taking the seat and opposite. Now, usually I wouldn't be quite so blunt, but today I'm going to cut straight to the point. He leaned back a little and folded his arms, his tone stern. Is something wrong? Or are you angry with me? You panicked in a tiny voice, holding your arms tightly and trying to keep calm. No, no, nothing like that. An amused smile spread across his face, but you could tell he was displeased by something. Your behavior and thought process are just, just something that is puzzling me. Huh? Puzzling you? How come? You tilted your head to the side as you grew confused, not understanding what he meant. He moved forwards and le leaned on his hands, eyeing you with an emotionless gaze. <clears throat> well, let's see. I prescribed you a hypocil, yet you didn't take it. Hannibal paused when you bit your lip from guilt. Then, I assumed you took it after our encounter at Camp Crystal Lake. I, I did for, for a night, but... <laughs> so when Freddy informed you, informed all of us in the living room that you just dropped, you just stopped taking it a second time, let's just say I, I was not happy. He sounded calm and collected, but his serious stare had intense, intensified exasperation dripping from his ex, ex, whatever for dripping from his voice it wasn't my intention to make you unhappy or anything like that you hardly spoke up so for that i apologize i just i just didn't know what to do at the time i felt like i was being tugged in two different directions at once one person wanted me to take it the other didn't want me to take it i just didn't know what to do Hannibal nodded at your reply, his frigid stance melting. I see. He shot you a softened smile, seeing your stressed out state and deciding to soothe you slightly. But what I don't understand is why you've returned to the hospital to retrieve more hypozo. It's almost like you're playing a game. Could it be that you've reached your limit with Cougar's repulsive behavior? The psychiatrist wondered aloud, his curiosity pinky as he carried on acting professional. No, that's not it. You felt nervous about confessing your little trick about the hypocell, tucking a strand of hair away from your, behind your ear. Well, um, it's, it's not for me. You told him in embarrassment, avoiding eye contact. You're expecting him to disprove of what you've done, giving the hypocell to your mother and lying, or at least dislike your disobedient mindset. But Hannibal merely chuckled, his lips curling into an used grin. My, my, I didn't think you'd had that hint. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't think you'd had that in you to do that yn i must commend you for that he clearly found it funny because he didn't disagree with your actions after catching on immediately i just didn't want them not to prescribe i just didn't want them not to prescribe her hypocil you know because she doesn't have a signed slip like i do you mumbled and flushed it flushed a tad staring down at the desk Hannibal, seeing your shy state, decided to dip into his underlying sad sadism. <laughs> so he held one of your hands in his and used the other to cut the side of your face, tilting your head ever so slightly. Tilting your head up ever so slightly. Well, I think that was very sweet of you. Therefore, there's nothing, there's no need to feel so embarrassed. He merely, he sweetly muttered, murmured, definitely enjoying how flustered you'd become. For him... It was extremely entertaining. The dark-haired male brushed his thumb over your hand's skin, wanting to silently laugh. Still, I feel bad tricking a a Isabella girl the way I did. That Isabella girl the way I did. You barely managed to reply due to your blushing cheeks and my wild heartbeat. Okay. This is probably one of the only... Th this uh, kind of surprises me because everyone would be just thankful they just didn't get caught. <laughs> Simple as that. Um, why does this feel so, so intimate? Was Hannibal acting this way on purpose? Duh. <laughs> or were you just being too hormonal? Probably. She's a receptionist, my dear. One who deals with many, many patients. So I think she'll get over it. He pointed out and added a cheeky wink at the end. That's if she even finds out said that said trick. I guess you're right. You smiled at the wink and calmed down a bit, feeling very comfortable around Hannibal by this point. I know I'm right. 
He smugly spoke, releasing the side of your face and letting go of your hand just before the door opened. Excuse my, please excuse my intrusion, Dr. Lecter, but Wyan's mother is requesting that she return to the front, de fr front desk now so they can leave. Isabella told him timidly, trying to remain respectful. Understood. Hannibal flashed the receptionist a fake smile and stood up. Come along, Wyan. He waited for you to stand up and held out his hand, sending you what seemed like a gentle smile. <laughs> Your heartbeat is st sped up, but you clasp his hand anyway, r staying silent and feeling the butterflies around your stomach. Oh, yeah. Um, this is so random because I actually watched this in the TikTok. A lady said whenever you feel butterflies in your stomach, that doesn't mean love. That actually means danger. Um, take that uh, as you please. Um, I've heard it, and I think it makes much more sense in certain things, especially whenever it involves a lot of these type of fan fictions um in real life yeah that would mean danger um i don't know you guys look it up y'all let me know if i'm right or not but take it as you will <laughs> anyway uh <clears throat> why did hannibal want to hold hands why was he so close to you why did you feel so on edge and, and why oh why and there you are your mother broke your train of thought Ready to go home now? You surprise her by shaking your head, remembering about your friends. You can go home without me, Mom. You decided, pulling your hand away from Hannibal's. I had to visit Laura and Candace still, remember? I'll text you later, but honey, I'll be fine. Really? You spoke over her, now wanting a whole conversation of why you, she, sh she should stay, why you shouldn't meet TC, TC. All right. Your mother gave in and gently smiled. Take care, sweetheart. Love you. Love you, too. You repeated the last part of her reply before watching her leave. A small bit of relief flooding through your veins. Time to visit Candace and Laura now. Okay, y'all, so I took a little bit of deliberation, but I will read one more chapter for the sake of sakes, all right? Because I kind of want to know what's going on. Um, chapter 32, Overte over Overprotective Psychiatrist. Wyan, so good to see you, Candace greeted brightly, her warm smile making you feel happier. How are you doing? I should be asking you that. You gave a soft laugh and sat down at the end of her bed, enjoying Candace's company. Ah, oh, I'm, I'm fine, she lightly replied, shifting to, into a better sitting position. The knife was just in my side, you know. Laura's the one who's actually recovering. The only reason I'm still here is because my parents are so dramatic. Candace rolled her eyes, acting strangely out of character. Is Laura all right? You acted anxiously. Is she still recovering? Does that mean she's in some kind of critical di condition? You felt uneasy at your own question, worrying about your black-haired friend. That was like, what? I thought it said black friend. I was like, huh? Black-haired friend? Oh, goodness. Sorry if I heard that. That was... That, my hand accidentally hit it. Sorry. Um, Laura will be okay. At, at least I hope so. She's just in a lot of pain right now candace candace's tone of voice switched into a sort of one the blonde girl feeling bad but they'll be able to remove the knife out right you tensed up and try to remain calm not wanting to overreact she said laura will be fine after all they will they will they're working on it right now as a matter of fact so i don't think you'll be able to visit her at the moment i'm sorry Wyan. Candace explained in a regretful manner, biting her lip and apologizing. Hey, hey, it's all good. You hid your disappointment and, ins and instead acted casual. I guess that means I'll have to visit some other time, huh? Forcing a smile to your face, you hid how you felt and kept your composure, <laughs> wanting to appear calm and collected. I'm sure it'll be sometime soon. She tried to cheer you up, and I'll message you as soon as they let her people visit her. The second part of her reply made you feel a little bit better. Your smile getting being genuine instead of fake now. Thanks, Candace. Your voice was filled with ga gratitude, hoping you'd receive a text message from your fan from your friend fairly soon. That really means a lot to me. No problem. That's what friends are. Excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> oh, a nurse entered the room and dipped her head for a second, shooting you to an apologetic look. But your parents have arrived. I think that's my cue to leave. Your smile twisted into a saddened one as you stood up. I was hoping we'd had more time together, but I'll visit so again soon, okay? You don't have to leave, you know. They're only my parents, Wyan. Candace responded. It's not like they hate you or anything, I know, but I think your parents will want some family time alone with you. You pointed out the girl in front of you not being able to com 
come up with a reply. Besides, it's not like you ne- you'll never ever see me again. You can text me whenever you want. I'll visit when you're fr- when you're free. But what about your psychology class? I-, I don't want you to get I don't want to get in the way of that. You could fall behind. She fretted on your behalf, making you laugh a little. Candace, I skipped out on it today, so don't even worry about it. You confess in amusement. I'll visit you as soon as I can. That sound good to you? Yeah. Candace relaxed and flashed you another one of her kind-hearted smiles. It does. See you soon, you warmly repeated, giving her a gentle hug and walking towards the door. And take care of yourself. You too. Bye, Lion. She said goodbye cheerfully, waving you while you left the room. Bye, Candace. You hoped that she was able to hear your voice, seeing as you were in the hot. Ho- in the hallway by this point man you wish you spent more time with her you could have spent more time with her not to mention you wanted to visit and speak to laura as well still a few minutes was better than no time making your way down the hallways of the hospital you eventually reached the front desk and headed in the direction of the entrance giving a quick wave to the receptionist as you did dr lector please wait you haven't finished doing going through all the folders a nurse called from behind you causing you to silver your head around and see hannibal again what a delight to see you once more, Wyan. His pleasant uh, persona and charming smile were the reason your heart fluttered ever so slightly, not knowing why you were ha- so happy to see him. Finished visiting your friends yet already? Yes, but I couldn't visit one of them, he answered, releasing an unhappy sigh. My friend Laura, she's, well, she's still being treated, but it's really nice to see you too. You grew timid towards the towards the end and blurted your last words out faintly blushing hannibal found your nervous state and in pink cheeks to be incredibly cute the the the, (coughs) excuse me the dark-haired male taking a few steps forwards it was amusing to him as well seeing as it only occurred when he just so happened to appear to happen to be around you how unfortunate Sincer- sincerity flowed and from his tone whilst his expression turned into one of sympathy, but I'm sure she'll recover in no time. You found his response to be strangely soothing, so you smiled. I hope so. You suddenly felt awkward and held one arm with the other, wondering how to continue the conversation. Crap, he was going to think you were slow or something. All that aside, would you mind if the two of us walked home together? Hannibal asked innocently, seeing as we're both finishing up here. But didn't that nurse tell you to... Oh, take no notice of her. He br- he brushed what you were going to say to the side, not caring about the nurse at all. She's not important at the moment. <laughs> you just said that... You just said that you were finishing up here. You spoke with suspicion, dripping from your tone. But if that's true, then why... It's nothing, Wyand, dear. Hannibal entw- entwined his ha- his fingers with yours and carefully guided you through the double doors. It's just it was just extra paperwork that wasn't even mine to do in the first place. His voice was smooth and sounded like he was telling the truth. But if he was telling the truth, then why did it feel so much like a lie? Oh, silence fell between the two. You two, your nervousness sparking up again. So, um, how how was work? You attempted to make conversation, growing frustrated by the hand-holding and how casual this all seemed to be. Same as always, Wyan, but thank you for asking. He Hannibal politely answered, how did visiting your friend go? His thumb stroked the top of your hand ma- and made your heartbeat spiral out of control. He had to be doing it on purpose. It went fine. You talked in a quiet voice. I'm just relieved that Candace, m- my friend, is all right. She's only in the hospital now because they're checking she's... Uh, she she's a hundred percent i see hannibal took in what you said and decided to, to secretly mess with you giving your hand a soft squeeze so do you do you happen to, so do you happen to have anything else planned for the rest of this afternoon he struggled to hold back a smirk tremendously entertained by how do you react uh well um taking a deep breath you calmed down a little and ignored your out of control heart i was i was actually going to see the others again you told him your plan and then decided to turn it to face him properly if that's okay with you of course you added quickly you're going to visit where we live again hannibal looked a little surprised but kept it well hidden smiling at you once more i certainly didn't expect you to want to return after what happened last time in fact i don't think it's particularly safe for you to do so he warned you holding both of your hands by this point i can handle norman you stood your ground and re- and relied on your tiny flicker of courage i've just gotta look out for the signs this time that's all slight twitching 
constricted eyes, erratic words and actions. I prepared this round, even if it it wasn't it wasn't even his fault. Hannibal bit back a cold retort retort, com- confused on why it bothered him so much. He couldn't he could take out the others out of the picture any time he wanted to. Be that as it may, I don't want you to be in any sort of danger. He released your hands and then cupped your cheeks with the palm of his hands, caressing the sides of your face and watching your face glow even brighter, an even brighter shade of pink. You understand, don't you, Ian? Ooh, it's getting good. Oh, I wonder what's going to happen. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, I'm going <laughs> to I'm going to quickly switch this back to me. <laughs> So hi everyone again. We that was interesting. Um, I want to know what happens. I want to know if we they get to somehow another fight. I am so interested and so invested. Um, I'm also happy I'm somehow able to finally finish this video. I thought I wouldn't be able to do this video at all. Um, luckily I'm not able to go to school tomorrow because um, I have to wait for a test to see whether the results are positive or not whatevs um so yeah wish me the best of luck in that uh also uh what do you guys think will happen next will our girl have the problem same problem that they had last time or will something interesting happen um also will freddie attempt to kind of slosh slosh his way through (laughs) through into her heart once again let me know in the comments down below and we will find out in the next video ah! um <clears throat> but before we go there uh like subscribe and hit that notification bell for more amazing videos guys i really hope i do get better soon it's either um i honestly think i have some type of internal infection or something like that which is why i've been sick for about a week um, I'm lucky that my vocal cords are even working at this point. So, I'm lucky. I'm able to make videos now. Yay! Anyways, without further ado, I got to get going, y'all. Bye and peace!